Hello soon to be space travelers. After watching this video, you will know step by step how to plan your trajectory and get into a stable orbit around Earth. You'll be surprised to find out how easy it really is. I know there's a popular phrase for that. Oh yeah, it's only rocket science. But before you start to overload social media with smug posts about going to space, let's start by making a plan and a rocket. Our goal is to achieve a circular and stable orbit above Earth's atmosphere. But first, we need to figure out what's going on with those pesky laws of motion and gravity so we can accomplish this. An orbit works by flying just fast enough that gravity pulls you down at the same rate that Earth curves downward. Too slow and we fall back to Earth. Too fast and we leave Earth completely. So we want to figure out what speed we need for a stable orbit. For this, we will need to grab a calculator and do some math. That way we can stay awake for all the math that we are also going to have to do. Consider the forces on the rocket in orbit. First, there is gravity pulling downward toward Earth. Second, well, that's pretty much it. We need to figure out the velocity to achieve a circular orbit depending on gravity. Velocity is a vector, meaning it has a magnitude, or some value, and a direction. Here, we can break it up into two components, vertical velocity and horizontal or tangential velocity. During orbit, the vertical velocity will be close to zero Otherwise, we would drift either towards or away from Earth. But since the rocket first needs to get above the atmosphere to reach orbit, it will start out with purely vertical velocity, then slowly tilt 90 degrees, converting its vertical velocity to horizontal velocity. This final horizontal velocity is what needs to be calculated. We want to know the ideal horizontal velocity for the altitude we reach, so we need an equation for this. If you went to high school, or maybe are just fluent in Google, you have probably heard Newton's equation for the force of gravity. G is the gravitational constant, big M is the mass of the Earth, small m is the mass of the rocket, and R is the distance between the rocket and the center of the Earth, not the surface. The definition of a force is a mass multiplied by its acceleration. So the force of gravity on the rocket is the rocket's mass times its acceleration. Gravity is pulling only in the vertical direction and just like velocity, acceleration is a vector with horizontal and vertical components. We are only concerned with the vertical acceleration, and this can also be written as v squared over r, according to rotational dynamics. Now look, the small m's cancel, along with an r from each side. This arrangement is useful to us because it relates velocity with altitude. Depending on how far away you want to get from Earth's problems, the equation will give us the horizontal velocity required to orbit at that height. Now the last thing we want is to come crashing down on Earth's nonsense, so let's make sure our orbital height is above the atmosphere. Next we need to build or buy a rocket. I would recommend SpaceX for this. Good bang for your buck. Plus it's good to support private industry whenever possible. NASA is overpriced and there's a lot of red tape involved, so that's a great option too if you enjoy waiting. But since I'm in college and short on cash, I will be building mine. Besides, we are only trying to reach a low Earth orbit, so the rocket does not have to be perfect. I figure I can just wing it. Here is actual time-lapse footage of my modest rocket being constructed in my equally modest garage. This is usually the toughest step for most people, so don't let any difficulties discourage you. Now, assuming you have a launch site available, you're going to want to get that out now. Then, all we need is a trajectory plan, and we're good for launch. But why waste time on Earth planning when we could be in space? Surely this step can be figured out as we go. Finally, it is time for launch. If you have followed this tutorial so far, you should have a rocket, a plan, and maybe a lightly skeptical outlook on this completely legitimate instructional video. At this point, the other tutorials usually recommend a test flight, but I will let you in on a little known secret. Test flights are actually just a scam to get you to buy more rockets. With that in mind, carry your rocket to the launch pad and begin counting down from 10. This is necessary for generating suspense. The countdown also functions as a sort of inebriation test to ensure those around you are at least sober enough for tasks such as pressing buttons, pulling levers, and turning knobs. This takes a certain degree of mental clarity. On that note, make sure to hide your beer on the trip. All right, anyone ready? Wait. Stop. No. Great, then here we go. 10, 9, 
eight, seven. Dude, you're not supposed to press that yet. Sorry, I just don't have the patience for this level of suspense. Whatever, I just can't believe this is actually working. Wait, what do you mean by that? Now that we are feeling some G's, you're going to want to take out some fat mixtapes. Or I mean, uh, navigational tools. Keep an eye on the altimeter and slowly turn towards the direction of Earth's rotation. Turn too fast and your vertical velocity will be too low to leave the atmosphere. If you do not turn fast enough, your low horizontal velocity could cause a suborbital path, possibly dumping you in a third world country. If this happens, you might as well toss the parachutes and prepare for what those in the industry call a rapid unintended disassembly, or RUD for short. So just be mindful of that. Wait until you reach the highest point of your trajectory, in other words where your vertical velocity is zero and the rocket begins to fall back to earth. At this point, make sure your rocket is 100% horizontal and increase your horizontal velocity until it matches the value calculated by the formula using your current altitude plus the radius of the earth for the variable r. This is one of the few situations where quick math skills decide life or death. Once you are officially in space, and you'll know by the serene, ponderous background music, celebrate. Go fetch that beer from the spare O2 tank. It's sure to be cold anyway. Another fun space activity is called an EVA, or extravehicular activity, where you chill outside your rocket. After celebrating, we have a little more work to do. Chances are your orbit is slightly elliptical shaped. To circularize your orbit, fire the rocket only at the highest and lowest points of the orbit. Space nerds call these points the apogee and perigee. At the apogee, fire the rocket in the prograde direction, in other words, the direction that you are moving. Then wait until you reach the opposite point of your orbit and check how closely the altitude compares between both points. Likewise, you can burn retrograde, or the direction opposite of movement, at the perigee to bring the apogee down. Repeat this process to your desired level of perfectionism. If you want to return to Earth, burn retrograde for a few seconds to reduce your horizontal velocity. Crap. Well, if you happen to run out of fuel on correction burns, you can use a technique called aero braking to slow your horizontal velocity using the friction in the atmosphere. Once you are near the surface and going slow enough, it should be safe enough to deploy your shoot. The empty beer cans must have sliced the parachute. Don't worry, there's extra. Extra shoots? No, extra beer. Oh, thank God. Be careful with this tutorial. Now that everyone knows how easy this is, be prepared for a crowded space above and lots of entertaining crashes. Have a mindful day.